Right, so you want to learn how to use Darktable, you're new to the whole Darktable space. I'm going to show you how to get started. Let's go. Alright, this is the first screen you will see when you open up Darktable. It's the light table menu. And in this menu is basically where the magic happens because right here you can import images or let's say an entire folder. So if you select that, you can import a folder, click open, and then all the images will be imported. Now the light table basically exists of two sides, a left side and a right side. And the left side has to do with importing the image in the image itself. So if I click an image, so I selected this one and I go to image information, it will show me all the information that there is available about this picture. So right now it's been shot on a Canon G7X Mark II with an aperture of 4.0 and exposure of 640. So that's the shutter speed. And then we've got an ISO of 125, which is logical because it was a very bright day. You can do this for every photo that has been taken. You see the values change when I select the different photos. Right, so that shows you, and even if you hover over it, it will show you all the information. So let's close that one down. Now, if you look at this image, it's very small, but now that I'm hovering over it, it says the image file number, so 0094, 1 500th of a second, and all the other settings. You can change that by clicking this little star symbol and it allows you to change the overlay. So you got no overlays, overlays on mouse hover, extended overlays, etc. Pick whatever you like. I can do permanent so that they are permanently visible. And now let me just increase the photos a little bit so that it's way more easier to look. Now, speaking of settings, there's this gear icon. And if you select it, you go to the settings menu of Darktable. There are a lot of options, but the most important one are general in which you can select the theme and in which you can select your language. The other one is processing, which will allow you to change the workflow from scene referred to display referred. That will allow you to have some additional options. And it means that one will start with filmic RGB and the other one with the base curve module. And then we've got the shortcuts, which is important if you want to learn the shortcuts in Darktable. Darktable has many shortcuts, so feel free to take some time to check these out. But if you want to know where they are, you can find them in the gear icon. Right, then on the right side is everything that has to do with this image. So if we go to select, we can select all, we can select none, we can invert a selection. So basically we've got nothing selected and if we click invert selection, everything will be selected. And that's what you can do with this. If you go to the selected images, so let's say we select one or we select multiple ones, we can create an HDR. And please keep in mind that Darktable does not auto align its images. So you need to make sure you've taken an image on a tripod from the same setting with no significant changes so that you can create an HDR. You can duplicate, uh, reset a rotation, do all kinds of things, trash them. And you can even change what you want to show up in the metadata. Then we've got the history stack. Right now we don't have a history stack. I'll show you in Darkroom. But you can add one here. So let's say I've created an image and I want you to have the XMP file. You can then get it onto your computer in the same folder with the image and then hit load sidecar file and you can load it up and you will see all the changes that I've made to that specific image. Which brings me to styles because these are the styles I've previously made. You can select one and it will be automatically applied to the image. Now Darktable stores these on your folder, on your hard drive, so you can import them as well. So let's say I made one and I give it to you, you can import it and then it will show up here as well. We've got a metadata editor, which you can change the title of the photo, the description, create a publisher and even copyrights if you want to or some notes. So uh, let's say I want to name this, this horse is one year old. I can put it in the notes right here. You can tag it and you can Jigo tag it. I'm not going into that for this video because I'm going to keep it simple. But you do need this one export selected in which you can change the final thing. You can give it a file name. So let's say one. You can change the file format. So JPEGs or even TIFFs if you want to import them into GIMP. You can set the quality which I've set standard to 100. And then it allows you to change all the size. So you can change it for print in centimeters or inches or by scale for a file. 
and you can allow upscaling or don't allow upscaling. We've got high quality resampling, which you can set to no and yes. And then the profile, this is a very important one. I get lots of questions about this. These are basically profiles you can use for log footage, for flat footage. If you're filming like I am as well, you might use the Rec. 709. In this case, I always set it to sRGB because I'm editing a photo and this helps with us not having to look at an image that we've posted on Instagram and be like, what has changed to this image? Because this will make sure that the colors you see over here will be the same colors online. Once again, you can add your styles here as well, but I suggest you do that beforehand. So let's go to the dark room tab. So now that we're in the dark room, there's the first thing I want to show you, which is snapshots. You can take a snapshot and it's very handy because that way you can see a before and after. So let's click it. It's going to take an image right now. I'm going to the history stack and I'm going to put it on orientation and I'm going to select the snapshot. And you see that this is where you're going to start with. And this is the image after some of these changes have been applied. So there's already a difference. I like to start from the orientation step because that gives me full control over what happens to this image. If you want to really learn how to edit your photos, I suggest you start here because this has taught me a lot because I have to do everything myself. Then next to the history stack, we have the duplicate manager. So let's say we edited this image. We're very happy with how it looks, but we want to try a different look. We can create a duplicate of this image which means that we can start from scratch. So that means that the first one will have all our changes. So let's say local contrast, tone equalizer. I'm not going to do anything. Exposure, maybe brighten it up just a little bit just to make sure you see a difference. And then if we go to the second one, the one we've duplicated, you see that those steps are not being added to the history stack, which means we can start from scratch and we can actually compare those by taking a snapshot and then go to the different one or different version select the snapshot and you see that oh this is how it looks so that's a great way how to use the duplicate manager then we've got the color picker which allows you to pick a color so that you can see the values over here and if you want to save them just click the plus move them over over here click plus again and why is this important to know because that way you can get or create a color palette from your image and color palettes are commonly used in the film industry to make sure that everything matches together beneath that is tagging i'm not going into that image information i showed you before that shows you all the information there is to know about this image and then finally we've got the mask manager now the mask manager is empty and that has to do with the fact that we didn't create any shapes or sizes just yet but as soon as you do so as soon as you're going to create a mask let me show you how I'm going to get a brush just going to brush over here boom you see that it is now appearing over here so all the shapes and sizes that you make will be added over here so let's close that one down and there's a couple of things I want to show you. I'm going to remove the mask. And here's how to do that. Just click the right mouse button on the mask and it will disappear. Or just hit Ctrl Z to undo everything. On the left bottom are a couple of options. Here's an option which gives you all kinds of things that you don't really need right now. Here's another thing. This will allow you to add your presets. So let's say a forest portrait. I have no idea if that will look great on this image, but this is a preset that I've made and now it's been applied to this image. And that's a very easy way to apply the styles that you've pre-made. So let's hit Ctrl Z to undo that. And then next to that is a great feature of Darktable, which is a second monitor option. So it gives you this little pop-up and it will show you real time changes. So you can place this on a different monitor and then look at that when you're editing it full screen and then still have this as your workflow workload or however you want to call it. On the bottom right are a couple of options which I use a lot as well. The first one is spot focus. It will show you everything that's in focus right now. It gives different colors, so blue, green, and yellow. Let me know in the comment section down below if you saw my previous video in which I addressed these. So let's deselect it. There's another one which gives a white border. This helps you look at your image and see how it will look on a white background. 
Then we've got some more options, but this one's the most important, which is the over and under exposure tool, which shows you what's being underexposed in blue and what's being overexposed in white. And you can tell it's very, very underexposed. But then again, I'm not very surprised because these are dark horses. We've got a very bright day. So we've got harsh shadows. And we've got harsh highlights. So it's not ideal. But this tool will definitely help you address that. And let's say you want to lift the blacks. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's get the tone curve. Let's activate it. And if I lift this area, you'll see that it starts to fade away. But then again, if you look at the image, you see that it doesn't look very good, but that's how you can lift the blacks. That's one of the ways how to do that. So let's go back to the orientation one, undo everything that we've done before. And let's move on to the next thing. And that is the modules, how to find modules, because Darktable is all about its modules. Every step, everything you can do has been put under some modules and some modules can do the same thing like contrast. You can find them by just searching for it. So let's say I want the RGB curve module. I just fill in RGB and here it is. We've got an RGB curve module and we've got an RGB levels module. Another way how to find your modules is by going to the modules groups. So we've got a color group over here. Then we've got a different group with the denoise and the sharpening. And then we've got like a creative menu, grain, vignetting, framing. So you can just scroll through these and then find your modules. One tip I have, and it's one of the questions I get the most about Darktable is, hey Rico, uh, a lot of things can be done a different way by using different modules. So let's say contrast, which modules are best to use and which modules can help me change the contrast. I just suggest you fill in contrast and it will show you all the modules that will allow you to change contrast. So that way you don't really have to look for them anymore. But now you know that, oh, I can change them over here. With my favorite one being the color balance one. Because that just gives me the best results in my honest opinion. And you can change how this looks as well by going here and then selecting manage presets. Beforehand, we had a favorites menu, which is not here anymore. But if you want to make changes, duplicate it. Because this is a read-only preset. So if you click this little symbol... It will duplicate this and it will allow you to add a module group. That's on the far side. So let's call this favorites. Let's see if we can change the symbol. Yes, we can. Give it the favorites icon. And then let's move it up to the first one. There we go. There we go. And now we've got this one. So let's close this one down. Let's go to here. You see that workflow scene refer one. And here we have our favorites module. If you want to add some, just hit the right mouse button. And let's say I want to add a color contrast. And let's say I want to add the color balance. And you can add your modules that way by clicking the right mouse button and then selecting them in the drop down menu. And that's how you can add and navigate through all the modules. So you can use the search module bar or you can use the group menus or you can just use the right mouse button and then add them in into your favorites but don't forget you will have to change the workflow or the presets by going to manage presets and then duplicate it and then add it in so i've showed you how to add contrast same applies for exposure so if i fill in exposure all the modules that will allow me to change the exposure will be shown here and then another way let's say color here you see that these are all the different modules that will allow you to change the colors of an image so I highly suggest you go and experiment with each and every one of them to see which different results all of them yield for you and which one you like best. Another thing I wanted to show you is the histogram. You can change it by clicking this symbol and that way you can see here are the shadows, here are the highlights and here are the midtones. I like to work with this one because that will allow me to create the perfect white balance which is done to make sure that Everything lines up perfectly so that you get the best white balance possible before you move on to the rest of the image. You can change this as well. So that will just show you the different things. Or you can select or deselect the colors to be shown in the histogram when you work on something. So this is a very important way to check if your image is properly exposed or if you need to 
tune down some things. So that's how you get started with Darktable. I've got plenty of more videos. Please check the playlist. I've got videos on how to cull through your images. I've got videos on how to change the color of your images or specific colors or specific areas. If you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button down there. For this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!